All right, it's been quite some time before I uh, posted anything regarding what's going on here. Uh, I've been playing with this thing constantly, uh, adjusting, using it to save energy because of the cost in California for BG&E. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I've, I've figured various things to use this for. I mean, just to give my feedback uh, regarding the EcoFlow, this nature's generator that tries to make it a little bit easier, you know, to um, integrate uh, the wind solar uh, technology. Uh, it's it's all fantastic ideas and stuff. Um, of course, there is a huge difference between the two. I mean, nature's generator is good, decent for its money. Decent. Um, there's definitely a lot of things that I wish they they had added to this, but then of course the price jacks up. It's that simple, you know. Um, simple cost demand, you know, bring up costs, make this affordable for everyone, you know. While the EcoFlow is definitely a much more higher cost, you you can buy several of these for the cost of that. But what this does is definitely. A lot more sophisticated than what this guy does but the fact that this provides wind it edges out this <laughs> but the the thing is that you know yeah there's various kind of things i mean currently my the setup i have right now is i'm supplementing energy as you can see lines everywhere because you know you can always just clean it up and and make it prettier or put it in a corner and all that i i've put these two together but this ecoflow I'm using it now as a backup for our um, garden wall tower to keep that, um, you know, powered on as well as full time powered on. And uh, we basically what our setup at home is, is basically 5 to 8, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. is our peak time of the day. That's how ours is set up at, at where we live here in the Bay Area. Um, from PG&E so based on that I I basically you know use this plugged in and uh, um, supply power to that but between 5 and 8 p.m. Uh, I have a, a plug basically another one of these these uh, um, wireless plugs if I'm at work and stuff and I have alarm that goes off you know this is a, a Wemo these are pretty cool wireless plugs you know look at the specs see how much they um um, use how much energy they use so you know that it doesn't overdraw and burn out that plug so long story short um, even if I'm at work and I forget I, I can set a timer to that too but sometimes it's not perfect if I'm home then I, I do other things so I basically set that timer to go off at 8 p.m. at night so it just charges this thing back up so it off peak you know, or on peak time charge, it's like three or four cents per kilowatt more. So during that time, it's powering like my wife's heater, space heater over there. And then um, basically um, powering this, this garden as well. So it's draining out and uh, it doesn't quite make it to the three hours sometimes when it's a little bit extra cold for her. So then I use the nature's generator, which I have a, a splitter, Y splitter plug. You know, this is actually to the wall outlet, but this is to the back too. And when I turn off the Wemo, or, because you definitely don't want to be drawing double power. And then I use this crazy contraption, this uh, tube male prong 110 outlet, plug it into here and then plug it into there. And that gives... A little bit of that energy which has 1.2 kilowatts back into there to make it to eight so then basically when i make it to eight though and i don't run it past you know any more than that then i can just kick on the wall outlet make sure i unplug this because you don't want to cause a short so i do have a y splitter back there to the back of the eco flow and then um let's see so the, e the the nature's generator, I do not plug it in at all. They say to plug it every six months, plug it into a wall outlet for, um, uh, you know, through the wall outlet here. Um, this is the wall outlet piece. Let me see where's my adapter. Let's see. 
Oh yeah, yeah, here it is. So this you can basically plug, I plug it in the EcoFlow, which goes bypasses from the wall outlet into there. So then I basically, um, then I just do a full charge, you know, for its health once in a while. But this thing gets fully charged from the combination of wind and solar that I get over here. Now, do I use a nature's generator solar panel? I do not. <laughs> I actually use an EcoFlow uh, 220, uh, what do they call it, bifocal? Bi or uh, the bi-directional uh, solar panel up on the roof. That's very efficient. It, when, when it reflects sunlight, it actually charges on both ends, adds like five to 15% more. So it remains under the 300 watt max this can take in. Even the EcoFlow can take in 1.6 kilowatts of potential power from solar arrays and stuff. I only have one 400 watt up there as well that's uh, supplementing the power here. So when I am home or I'm work from home, basically um, at night, I, I would actually leave this off because the schedule of this turns off at around 10. So it doesn't draw any power. So early in the morning when I get up, you know, I turn on the wall outlet. Well, I guess I could just walk over there. So it runs over here and across. It's my contraptions of messing around. So that's the uh, the Wemo that I have plugged in. And of course you can manually turn this on and off right here, or you can do it from the app. So basically I turn that on first thing in the morning when, th when this thing is, is dead or I don't make it dead, right? I tell it to stop at 5% um, when it's, if it's a uh, phantom draining, and because I think it phantom drains slightly from this thing. This thing is off at 10 PM, but it's not off, off, if you know what I mean. There's always a signal going to it. So when that goes on, then it's, it's, it's charging from the beginning of 5%. It will take, so I, I you know, I, I'd hit this on around like, for example, 6 AM. 6 a.m., it says it would take about like 13 and a half hours to charge. So that means it would become 7, 7.30 p.m. by the end of the evening, which would be in the peak time. But the good part is because I have one solar panel, but the more you put on, the more it will assist and help. But, you know, I'm just being efficient, save cost, trying to do the best of both things. So I have the solar, the 400-watt solar that's recommended for this, but you can put four in a row and charge it exponentially faster. Um, so basically it helps assist charge. So it will make it before the 5 p.m. peak time anyways. It will probably be charged by three o'clock, two, 30, three o'clock, depending on the sun intensity. Like today, out here, as just showing you, it's a little bit foggy. Well, this is kind of high cloud. Um, and then right now there's no breeze, so we're not getting any wind today, but, um, this will still out of the 400 watt, I've, I've seen a max of almost 170 watts go into it. So that supplement 170 watts is going to charge along with the set 200 watt limit because I trickle charge it. I don't want to, I don't want to blast charge it in the EcoFlow. So that's why I set at 200 watts, but when you have this plugged in, you can make this charge in, in like an hour, you know, hour and a half at most um, from the wall outlet by by charging it at max speed. But I want a longevity, you know, there's a little controversy between the two. You know, fast charging is hard on the on a um, lithium ion battery. So in general, so I just trickle charge it. And uh, I've had this thing now what for over a year or more in um, yeah, it I the battery degradation I haven't seen very much if any still, and this is of course just a special kind of a sle uh, sealed car battery of sort inside that of 1.2 kilowatts worth of energy, and I've used this too as well to charge all the little devices and stuff I have, and right now I'm just running this roughly, but just showing you that um, I charge my workstation when I do work from home. Uh, and then of course, when I go to work, I go to work in person, then I basically don't have to worry about it. And that battery gets fully charged, but this always keeps it in check. This pull, this, all this setup right here that I have from, uh, um, 
from the earbuds to the, the wireless charging to the laptop to the um, to the the screen. This can at, at most pull that I've seen on the screen pull about 105 watts at a, at a usage, but then it drops back back down considerably. But that was like max, and I see it just pop in once in a while, and you and you can see that usage through the screen, obviously. Oops, of course on the camera can barely see that interesting but with the human eye you can see that very clearly so when the light does turn off of course this this is truly off till you uh, actually turn it on see I've just turned on it says 10 hours left so far see it's charging at 200 watts this thing's taking about 140 watts I've seen this thing take 155 watts or so when the pump is turned on and it's on boost mode right now. So when it's on, on a lighter, uh, lighter, uh, less boosty mode, it takes about 60 Watts, this plan. So this is always on and it's always using power right now. I'm also using the, uh, home medic air filter, kind of giving it, uh, some circulation. So this actually is running off of this. This thing barely even uses anything, uh, at full blast, it will use about 50 Watts. But I'm using it low, and I set the timer for like eight hours, and uh, it, it's barely using anything. Ten watts at the most, eight, ten watts. That that's hardly using anything. So this can run this continuously, and also supplement this if needed. I noticed during the summertime, yes, then then you don't use the heater. But where I live, it's always cool or cold um, throughout the day and evening. So that's just the Bay Area for you. Um, on the coast anyways so yeah just wanted to share that update i i don't know how confusing that was to anyone but that's kind of how i've been using this sort of uh you know i use that to supplement um also also this um this charges if it needed to be a backup for my wife when she does work from home i've also set up a like a backup wire over here where she can plug unplug that this wire and plug it into this which then would power her screens when she's work from home along with having see i have all kinds of backups here with an acpu uh a p c ups right there down there underneath her bose speaker that's that's powering her laptop that's powering the airport extreme and the google along with <laughs> Hang in with me <laughs> because I got a lot of stuff, random stuff here. So I also have, I also have another APC UPS down here, which is also backing up our modem and our another airport extreme that's bridged. Anyways, so that's about all the mess I have going on currently, and uh, you know the kind of the way to back things up or anything like that if and this is our again the dual wind turbine that's how that operates so uh, yes i can clean all this up and i and i tend to you know run the wires along the wall or something like that i'm just messing around this is all temporary sometimes you just don't know your job position or what you're doing so but i was just trying to offset power do all these things and i've been saving honestly i've been calculating out on a given day, I, I can save anywhere from, you know, the kilowatt cost. You can save anywhere from three to one to two, one to three dollars a day. So calculate that in a year. And that's a, a significant savings. But it's not just about the saving because you'll say, oh, well, all these things, this thing costs a ton of money. This thing costs a ton of money. Yes, of course, this thing I got that through Costco, so that was like four grand. But this is a battery backup system. And this this thing I got for like 600. And, and the components and everything and connecting the... If you've watched my channel, you'll see videos of my uh, wind turbine. Oh, well, I guess I can show that as well. Real quick, so... It's up just enough. There's, when they are running, they're supplying energy. But today, see, nice and still. And I, of course, bought the wood and the pipe and all that stuff to to install this, install this up on there. And then 
But the whole idea, it's, it's not about just saving money anymore, which is honestly the beginning part of this project for me. It's more like about having backup. Because my wife and I calculate, we get about like a, a half dozen power outages a year. And that's very detrimental if you're working from home. So the idea behind battery backup and variable solutions to that is extremely appealing, especially when you live in earthquake city, earthquake state. So just to have that kind of opportunity. And, you know, we do have like things like a plug in, um, uh, a con uh, an induction, uh, um, a cooktop, you know, a nice one, a two, two burner, you know, you have things that electrically that you can plug in to, you know, provide heat, light and all that energy for your cell phone backup, you know, all those little things you can, I can plug in the PlayStation into that with the TV and you could just be playing video games when the power's out. Of course, ideally you want to, you know, it depends on your money and everything and, you know, all that stuff. So, Right now, this is the way I'm running it. Um, I do we do plan someday to get that secondary, you know, 3.6 kilowatt battery backup for this uh, Delta Pro, you know, on, you know, put it on the bottom or the top of it, um, probably on the bottom of it because this, if we needed to take it with us, I, I I could take it apart, roll it out, you know, just unplug a couple things and roll it out. It's not a big deal. <laughs> But anyways, I hope this was in a very informative video and um, you know, it helps anyone get any ideas or just, just laugh at my mess and that's fine because I'm just experimenting every, every, every week, every month, you know, on my spare time, just seeing what, what I can offset, what this can power compared to what this can power and and of course, the Delta Pro is the workhorse, really. This thing works too, but it, it's just not as reliable. Once this thing is done, it just with no warning, it just turns off the inverter and just bam, like that, you know, no, no warning. This thing gives you Wi-Fi connection. This you have to be Bluetooth, and your location on and be within 20 feet of this thing for it to pick you up. This I, I've actually controlled this. Um, remotely from being in another state or traveling because it goes off my Wi-Fi. So, and my Wi-Fi is backed up and all that. So, therefore, my Wi-Fi's power is backed up so I can always be connected to this along with our security cameras. Anyways, thanks for watching.